Hey everybody, I have another video for you today. I'm going to, in this video, effectively do a part two of creating your own new workspace. In the last video, and there's links in the description back to it, uh, I showed you how to create your own workspace uh, by following these three steps. But I didn't really show you how to add a widget to it. So I'm gonna show you that in this uh, video. So let's go back to the workspace we created um, from the first video. It was just this John 1 workspace. And for the most part, it's empty. Uh, yes, there's a serial port console in it, and there's the um, JSON server widget. But I want to add an, a, a widget right here. And what I'd like to do is add the Lua editor. Um, so to go do that, we're going to get back in and edit our workspace in Cloud9. Now for you, if you try that off of my sample, it'll put you in read-only mode, but for me, I can just go in and, and edit it because Cloud9 knows who I am. So what we've got here is all of our code, but the Lua editor, we'll open this in another tab. We'll go back to chilipepper.com homepage and we'll go into the Node MCU workspace. Now the Lua editor really is just the uh, Atom editor, or I'm sorry, the Ace editor, um, which is a really well done you know, JavaScript uh, based editor that you could use for a lot of projects. If you wanted to make your own editor for your own code or maybe your own macro editor, this is a great place to start and it's got a lot of features already built into it, like saving local files. Um, so what we'll do here is we will go look at fork widget in github we don't need to fork it though we actually just want to use it directly but what you can do is at least view in github the readme file because the readme file gives you the code to load this widget so in fact i'm going to steal this code and i'm going to go back into my workspace and i want my um my widget to go right here. See that widget 2 goes here. Let's actually bring back up the preview of this. Um, yeah, widget 2 goes here. We want to put it there. So I actually already, uh, I'll start this over, but in this div, we want to say, um, in fact, what we could do here is we could change this to actually say um, Lua editor goes here. I will save that and then re-show you right here Lua editor goes here now one of the things that I kinda like to do is split this pane into two columns just so I can um, sort of see what's going on now of course the layout of this workspace is a little funny that it it restacks everything because I'm using bootstrap uh, that's a feature not a bad thing but okay so Lua editor goes here now you have to give an ID uh, when you use chili pepper dot load to pull in another um, widget you have to give it an ID, not a class name. So com chili pepper widget Lua editor. But I want to just say instance. I like to add the word instance to it to sort of say, look, this is where we're instantiating it. Um, so we'll save that. And then we'll go into the JavaScript. And if you go way down to the bottom, you see all these like load workspace menu, load console widget, load SPHS widget. Those are doing the whole chili pepper dot load so let's just mimic one um, in fact what I'll do I'll just copy this paste it and I'll say load the Lua editor widget and we'll change the name of this up oh. load Lua editor widget and we will then go back and steal this code. Go back here. And we'll just paste that in. Now, the one thing I know we have to change is this first parameter is the ID of the div. That you'll you'll just get used to the fact that those are those are the that's the like the key item you gotta modify. So let's just go back and copy this into our clipboard. Um, paste that in here and for the most part we should be good to go. It's going to load this 
URL from GitHub, which is the, the monolithic HTML JavaScript CSS file. Remember, that's all widgets are. They're just one big HTML file that has the JavaScript and CSS inlined. Once that loads through an AJAX call and is inserted into that div, this callback function is called, and then we can use CP require to, it, that uses require.js, and it searches all of the JavaScript for this ID and returns it as an instance right here, and then we init our instance. So let's try that. I'm going to hit save. Uh, it won't load yet because I'm not calling this from the init method. So up here in init, you know, every chili pepper widget and workspace have an init. Uh, what I'll do is probably right here I'll do it. This dot load Lua editor widget and semicolon. Save it. And let's see if it actually works here. There it is. It's already loading. Look at that. Thing of beauty. Cool. So now, um, because I want to, I want to actually see it back in here. I've got to actually publish this up to GitHub. So the way to do that is you make sure that runme.js is running. That's the Node web server um, script that you can use. It's just nice handy dandy. You could do this manually too. Um, so for instance, you could say uh, like git uh, commit dash a all that stuff but this runme.js makes life way easier so I open it in preview I did not open it let's do that again open in preview yeah there it is and then I actually usually chuck it over there so we'll hit reload and it pushes everything so now I'll go back to the github for workspace John one just to kind of see I got like these just now updates I sometimes do that just to verify that this got updated and of course you should eventually update this screenshot to more reflect what you're doing now I go back here and I could just hit reload but that is not going to do it as I've pointed out in a couple other videos you have to force Chili Pepper to refresh because it caches everything in its servers in case other sites are down. There it is. Lua Editor is running inside it. So that was really all it took. Um, super easy. Now, um, in the next video, I will actually show you how to uh, make your own sample widget. So until then, uh, enjoy dropping in your own widgets to your workspace. Thanks.